Hello and welcome to a new series about building a processing library in Java. So if you've ever wanted to learn a little more about Java programming and how open source works and how you can contribute your own code through to, as a library to some other platform, this is the place for you. I started working with processing in 2003, which is some number of years ago. It's too many years ago, I can't possibly do that math. Um, and one of the things that I first did when working with processing was contribute libraries to it. And you can see here, I'm scrolling through the processing libraries page. There are libraries for all sorts of categories. I'm just gonna go here under uh, video and vision, for example, and we'll see there's a library for using like the PSI camera, for doing uh, OpenCV. Oh, look at this one for the Kinect. It's really not kept up to date. Um, there's a lot of wonderful libraries here. Blob detection, this is a really useful one. I have some videos about doing blob detection processing with your own code, but you could use a library for it. So maybe you've used processing, maybe you've used a library before. How would you make your own library? This is what this video is about. I have to admit something to you. I have not actually done any research or practice before I'm beginning this right now. I have made processing libraries, but I haven't really made one in a while. So a lot of this series will also be me sort of figuring it out as I go, and hopefully everything works just fine. Um, it's somewhat of an ancient medieval art <laughs> how to build a Java, a co compilation of Java classes to insert as a processing library. Um, and um, a lot of the stuff I, you notice I've been doing is JavaScript um, on the channel these days, but um, maybe after I do this, I'll come back and show you how to make your own JavaScript library as well. So the very first thing that we need to do is go to the processing library template under the processing GitHub organization. And you'll notice something. It actually says template here, and there's this little button here, use this template. This is a new feature of GitHub. I don't know how new it is, maybe it's been there for a while, but I've actually never used this feature up until right now. A lot of times when you're using GitHub, maybe you're just trying to find some code and you're clicking around, you copy and paste it, or maybe you're even ambitious enough to clone or download. So cloning is a process of taking this repository and cloning it, say, to another, to your local computer, your laptop. I'm actually gonna do that a little bit later in this video. Um, downloading would just be downloading the code. There's this process of forking a repo, which is kind of creating a version of it that is linked back to the original version. But this is a scenario, this is the, a rare scenario, where what I wanna do is build an entirely new project it's not really related to this. It's related to this in that this is my starting point, but there's no reason for what I wanna to build to be a fork of the template because I am not contributing back to the template. If there is an issue with something wrong in the template, then I would wanna make a fork to fix the thing that's in the template, but I just want to start from it. That was a very long explanation for me just basically pressing this button. So I'm going to press this button. I'm actually gonna switch this to coding train. Um, because I would like this library that I make to be a community project that people could submit to. And I mean, I could do that under Shiftman as well, but this is a coding train processing library. And we're gonna call this Open Simplex Noise uh, Library. Uh, I'll call it for processing. Let's call it for processing. So that's gonna be the name of the repository. This is a new, a processing or open simplex noise. And I wanna make it public, and I wanna create the repository from the template. I love this. I love that this is a new repository, a new project, but GitHub is being thoughtful about this and crediting back where it was generated from. Now, what is the next step? The next step is now I wanna work with this and update the code and change it around and put my stuff, my open simplex noise stuff in it. And by the way, you might be wondering, what is open simplex noise? So I have a whole video about what that is. Um, it's not really important right now. The point is how to make the library, but I wanna make it in the context of something that would be useful. So I'll come back and talk more about open simplex noise and we'll look at some examples with it as we get a little further along. So I'm gonna click clone. Uh, I'm gonna copy this, I'm gonna go to my uh, terminal application, I'm just on the desktop and I'm gonna say git clone and I'm going to clone this particular repo which will now download everything to my computer. I'm just gonna then open up that repo. Oh no, I'm not. 
I'm not. I was about to open up that repo, and I'm doing it right now in Visual Studio Code, which would be fine because then I could kind of like look at like what's in there. There's like a hello library Java template and stuff. But no, no, no. Close all this. This is not what I want. This is a very momentous occasion. This might be the first time I need to use a Java development environment. I'm sure there's some magical way I could make Visual Studio Code do what it is I want to do, but I want to do this with a Java development environment, namely Eclipse. This is the Eclipse Foundation website where you can download and install Eclipse, and I'm going to do that in a moment. I should mention also that uh, a lot of people in the chat are saying, oh, use IntelliJ. I like that better than Eclipse. I don't know. Maybe it is better. Maybe it's worse. Who knows? Who cares? I'm just going to use Eclipse. It's the only one I've ever used, and I want to have at least one thing here that I don't have to learn that's new, but maybe I can come back and show IntelliJ at some point, or one of you can make your own video about doing the same thing with IntelliJ, and I can link to it. Let's download Eclipse. I'm going to get this most latest version. Uh, I'm going to download the 64-bit. Uh, this link looks good. Eclipse, much like processing, is a non-for-profit foundation, um, and you can donate. All right, once you've downloaded it, you're going to get this Eclipse installer, and then you've got to choose what you want here. Um, I want Eclipse IDE for Java developers, I think. That's what I'm doing. So I'm going to install it here. Uh, hit accept, and here we go. All right, I've downloaded installed it. I'm going to launch it now. I also should mention that I think the processing library template is designed for use with Eclipse. It's creating a workspace, which is similar to like a processing sketchbook. All right, here we go. I have Eclipse now. Now, I'm going to have to do some work to like fix the font sizes. I realize if you're watching this, you can barely see anything. But right now, I'll just use Zoom for a second. And what I want, these are my options. I could create a new project, a Java project, a sort of general project. But what I want to do, I, I'm pretty sure, is import a project. So I'm going to click on import. And then uh, these are all of my options. Oh, look at this. It even has like a Git. So I actually could probably import it from Git, but I think I can just do general existing. I think I, this is what I want. I think I want existing project into workspace because the processing library template is an existing Eclipse project. <laughs> so then I'm going to hit next. And I want to find that directory, which is just on my desktop called Open Simplex, uh, Open Simplex Noise for Processing. I'm going to hit Open, and you can see, look at that. Oh, interesting. It's called Processing Library Template. So there's probably somewhere that there's like a name for it that I might want to rename. I'm not going to worry about that too much right now. I'm just going to click now Finish, uh, Finish, and OK, there we go. This is looking promising. Oh, I have a red X. But you can see now, this is an Eclipse project. It's got all of the files here in this like directory tree. Um, there's a data folder, an examples folder, a lib folder, a resources folder. I may have to get into what's in those things, but the most important one right now is the source folder. I'm going to click on that and we're going to see like this is really, this is the Java file. It's not a PDE file, not a processing development environment file. It's an actual proper Java file. This is what the file that I'm going to need to work with. Let me quickly mention that under the preferences, under general appearance, you can change the theme to dark mode, which I'm doing right now. P applet cannot be resolved to a type. The import processing cannot be resolved to a type. So this is because this particular project needs as a dependency the processing core library itself. So there are a couple different ways that I could tell this project, my processing library, about the processing core library. And I'm going to show you the easiest way to do that right now. I should mention, however, that all of this, all of what I'm awkwardly kind of stumbling through, is actually here as instructions on the readme. And the step that I'm looking to do right now is adding core.jar or other jar files to your class path. So the idea of a class path is a very important concept in Java programming. It is the path where all of your dependencies live, all of the classes that your project depends on live, the path to your classes, the class path. So 
the way that the what I want to find is core.jar. That's a bundled jar file. It's like a zip file that has all of the processing Java classes in it. And there's a variety of different ways that I can find it. But if I happen to have processing installed on my computer, on the Mac, and you can find this similarly on Windows or Linux, um, I can actually just right click on here and go to show package contents. A a Java application is actually just a directory of files. It's kind of the operating system is hiding that for you. But I can go here under Java and look at this core.jar. Now I might find that I need other dependencies eventually, but right now I just want core.jar. So what I'm going to do is I am going to copy that into my project just by dragging it over. I'm just going to put it in the root directory. Maybe there's a better place to put. Oh, I could link to the file, huh? There might be different reasons why you might want to do one or the other. I'm, I'm going to stick with copy just so that I know it comes in. So I can see core.jar is there. I still have my errors though. But what I want to do now is I'm going to right click core.jar and I'm going to go to build path. Build path is essentially another sort of term for class path. And I want to add this to the build path. So I'm going to click add to the build path and then voila. All of those errors go away. It knows what p applet is because p applet is part of processing.core. p applet is the base class for every sketch you write in processing. Almost finished this first part now. I'm just about ready to actually start doing the coding of the library itself. This first part was really just to set up the project itself. But I want to do a few more cleanup things. Number one is it shouldn't be called processing library template. So I'm going to right click here and go to refactor, rename. And I'm going to change the new name to open simplex noise for processing. Looking more closely at the instructions, I've discovered actually that the point of this lib folder is this is where other dependencies should go. So I'm actually just going to move this core.jar file into there. And I think the project, oh, now it's complaining at me. So you should have copied it in there in the first place. But now uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the project go to build path, uh, configure build path. And this is now, it's confused. This, this core.jar file is now missing. I'm going to hit remove. <laughs> and then I'm going to do uh, apply and close. Then I'm going to just go back to this and go to build path and add back to the build path. OK. So now I have my project set up. There are a few last remaining steps we need. We want to get to the point where I can build the library. I want to see the build successful message, and I'll be done with this first video in the series. So what I need to actually do is I need to look for a file called build.properties. And this is going to be in the resources folder of the Java project. So let's go back to Eclipse, go here under resources, build.properties. That's what I want there. Oh. I have never seen anything like this. So it appears that uh, Eclipse has added a GUI for build.properties, but I'm actually just going to click here <laughs> so I can look at the actual text file. Um, and this is, uh, this, is, this is important. So where is my processing sketchbook? I'm going to open up processing to make sure this is right. I'm going to go to Processing's Preferences, and we can see Users Coding Train Documents Processing. That's where the sketchbook is. Great, that's User Home Documents Processing. OK, ah, Class Path Local Location. This is the next setting that I need to change, and I need to make sure it points to the Processing Core Libraries. I spent a lot of effort getting that core.jar file into my project, so I now I also need to point from build.properties. So there's a variety of places I could point to the processing application, which for me is on the desktop, but it might be in your applications folder. It's going to be different on Windows or Linux. I think for me what might actually be easiest is just to comment this out and point to where the actual, this actual project is. So this actual project is here on my desktop. Desktop, open simplex for noise processing. So um, I can put that in here, paste that here. 
Then there's a file called lib for library where core.jar is, uh, not a file, a directory. So I should just put that in here and hit save. That's good. Class path local include core.jar and then class path libraries location is sketchbook.locationlibrary. So all this is the same target version 1.8. That should be fine. Um, all this stuff is fine. Uh, project name, uh, so there's more stuff I should change. So I'm just gonna say open simplex noise. Um, I'm gonna say uh, open simplex noise for processing. Um, this is not super important. I can fix this. I can fix this stuff up later. But let's um, just do some of this right now. Uh, and I don't have a, li a, a URL yet. And there's categories. Let's just put it in other. Um, actually, is there math? Math. I'm doing all these now. All right, I'm, I'm gonna fix this up later. I'm gonna put the rest of these, but you can see that there's lots of other things there's, that I can uh, put in here. But I'm gonna leave this all out. I'm gonna hit save and I'm gonna go to the next step. The next step is to compile the library using ant. What is ant? Ant or Apache Ant is basically a build system for Java. Uh, it's maybe somewhat ancient, <laughs> um, but it's what's used by the uh, processing library template. So if I go back to Eclipse, so to be able to see Ant, I need to go to Window, Show View, Ant. And you can see the little icon of the Ant. Let's click that. And now I should have somewhere, oh, Ant. Now I see it. The next step is to take this build.xml file and drag it over to here, and we can see there it is. Processing library, open simplex noise for processing, and I can click this and do run as ant build. Run as ant build. Okay, now we say a little prayer to the ant god, and we run that. We built the processing library. Build successful. Look at this, I'm gonna open up processing. I'm gonna go to sketch, import library. Oh, look at this, open simplex noise for processing. The library is there. Now, it's saying import template.library and there's no code for me to actually use, but I now have the processing library building and I can start writing the code. So in a way, this was really the hardest part. The next stuff that I wanna do is going to be quite simple by comparison. It's really just adding the code, adding the examples, building the library and publishing it. So that will come uh, in the next video or two or three um, and I'll see you there. Thanks for watching this. We built a processing Java library.